Just as we saw that utility maximization and expenditure minimization are mirror image optimization problems for the consumer, that is, expenditure minimization is the dual of the primal utility maximization problem, there is an intimate relationship between choosing a level of output and minimizing the costs of producing that output. If we write the total cost function as a function of labor and capital multiplied by the input prices, then the envelope theorem tells us that the derivative of the cost function with respect to W yields the derived demand for labor. This application of the envelope theorem is called Shepard's Lemma. Defining a relationship between the long-run total cost function and the input demand functions, that is, the rate of change of the long-run total cost function with respect to an input price is equal to the corresponding input demand function. Let's do an example. Starting with a production function, I can solve the constrained minimization problem by setting the marginal rate of technical substitution equal to the ratio of input prices and substituting the result into the production function to yield the input demand. Substituting these back into the expression for total costs allows me to find the total cost function, which has no apparent connection to the original production function. Duality theory argues that I can reverse the process. From this total cost function, I can recover the economically relevant portion of the production function. I say economically relevant because it won't allow me to observe any sections of the production function that are not quasi-concave, that is, that fail to yield a local cost-minimizing combination of labor and capital. Applying Shepard's lemma to this total cost function yields the input demands. The trick now is to get rid of the input prices. Let's compare the general approach with the details for this particular example. The mathematics of the total cost function are such that when we extract the input demands, we end up with functions that are separable in Q and the input prices. For the general case, F, G, H1, M1 are monotonic functions of Q, or the ratio of the input prices. Rewrite the second equation so that it is a function of the expression for the ratio of input prices from the first equation. That is, R over W to the one-half is equal to Q over 50 divided by K. Substitute this back into the first equation over 50 times Q over 50 slash K. Now solve for Q as a function of L and K. Here, Q squared is equal to 50 squared L K, or Q equals 50 L to the one-half K to the one-half. One of the major applications for these duality results is in the econometric estimation of the determinants of supply. For a variety of reasons, it is usually easier to estimate cost functions than production functions. Perhaps the most common starting point in empirical work is the translog cost function. Note 
that if all of the coefficients beyond B3 equal 0, then this collapses to a constant elasticity cost function associated with the Cobb-Douglas production function. That is, Tc can be written as A Q to the B1, W to the B2, R to the B3. The point is, the translog is a very flexible functional form that allows us to approximate virtually any cost function. By now, we know that L is equal to the partial derivative of Tc with respect to W. Using the chain rule, I can write the partial derivative of Tc with respect to W as the partial derivative of Tc with respect to the log of Tc times the partial derivative of the log of Tc with respect to the log of W times the partial derivative of the log of W with respect to W. Why would I want to do that? Because it makes my job a bit easier. We know that the partial derivative of the log of W with respect to W is just 1 over W. And I have my middle term here, log Tc with respect to log W. Then this first term is just the reciprocal of the partial derivative of the log of Tc with respect to Tc. So that's just Tc. So if I isolate the partial derivative of the log of Tc with respect to the log of W, I get W times L over Tc is equal to the partial derivative of the log of Tc with respect to the log of W. This is just the input share, that is the share of total costs devoted to labor. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking the derivative of my translog cost function with respect to the log of W and there's nothing in B0 so there's nothing in log Q so I have B2 plus next term with a log W in it is 2B5 log W plus B7 times log R plus B8 log Q and there's no log W here and then I have to add an error term if I'm going to estimate this econometrically. Why did I do all this? Well, the general translog cost function is hard to estimate because it has so many terms that are functions of the same underlying variables. It suffers from what econometricians call multicollinearity, a condition that makes it hard to estimate the individual coefficients with precision. We can get more precise estimates by estimating simultaneously the input share equations which our duality theory allows us to derive from the total cost function. So, and this is the point of this video, the primal dual aspect of cost minimization has very practical implications. It makes it possible for managers to project the costs of expanding or reducing output or responding to input price changes. And it allows us as analysts to understand the cost structure of the industries we study.